Today's lesson is on segments. This is day two. Day one was vocabulary, so we're going to do day two now. Okay, our learning objective is I can determine the distance of a segment by applying the segment addition postulate, the distance formula, or Pythagorean theorem. I can re read grade level content vocabulary by using support from peers and the teacher. Okay, so let's talk about what is using the ruler postulate. We talked about that in the last lesson. And the ruler postulate says, I have my numbers on a ruler. So let's talk about a couple things. So we're gonna go back to I need to know the difference between geometry and algebra. So when I have no segment, segment symbol, so above BE here, I don't have anything. That is distance. When I have a segment symbol above my letters, then I know I have a shape. This is geometry. So here's geometry. This is algebra. Okay, so if I'm looking on my number line here, my points are B and E. B is at the coordinate negative one and E is at the coordinate five. So if I want to find the length of segment BE, what I do is I take <clears throat> the second number, or the number on the right, I'm going to take the absolute value, and I'm going to say 5 minus the value on the left, which is negative 1. So distance, I use the absolute value. And I usually take the one on the right minus the one on the left. So when I have a minus a minus, that becomes a plus. So minus a minus becomes plus. So this becomes five, absolute value of five plus one, which is the absolute value of six. And when I take the absolute value, I always take the positive. So BE is the distance from B to E is 6. So distance is always positive, never negative. Well, that, that's doing the algebra. So I can go back and I can count and verify this. So I can count one, two, three, four, five, six. So I verify by counting, but I wanna be using algebra. All right. Okay, so let's find different lengths if I have several on, several points on my number line here. Okay, find the length of each segment, show using an algebra, and then check by counting on the number line. So my suggestion is I use the right minus the left. So for segment M to N, I wanna know what is the distance from M to N. So I'm gonna say that absolute value of four minus one which is the absolute value of three, which is three. Okay, and I can verify that go by going one, two, three. Number two, from L to N, so the distance from L to N, so I'm gonna say the absolute value of four minus negative two, a minus a minus becomes a plus. So this is the absolute value of six, which is six. 
So from L to N, I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, and verify. Okay, can you pause the video and you do number four and five? Okay, so number four, the distance from K to J. So from K to J, I'm going to say <clears throat> K to J is going to be negative 3 minus negative 5. So minus a minus is a plus. So negative 3 plus 5 is the absolute value of 2, which is 2. And if I verify from K to J, this is 1, 2. Okay, the distance I want to find between points J and L. So the distance of segment JL. So J to L. So L is at negative 2. And J is at negative 5. So 2 minus negative 5, the absolute value. So minus a minus becomes a plus. So the absolute value of 3, which is 3. Okay. All right, let's use the segment addition postulate. I want to find the distance from D to F. So from D to F, D to F is going to equal the distance from D to E plus the distance from E to F. Okay, so the segment addition postulate says if I add my two segments, I'll get my whole. So here is my whole, and I'm going to add my part number one and my part number two. So D to F by substituting D to F equals D to E is 23 plus E to F is 35. So adding together, I get the distance from D to F is 58. Okay, let's try the next one. Find the distance from G to H. Okay, so this time I'm looking for a part. I'm going to use my same equation. The whole thing, so from F to H, this is the whole thing. Is I'm going to add my two parts. So F to G plus G to H. I'm going to substitute in F to H is 36. F to G is 21. And I'm looking for the distance from G to H. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 21 from both sides. So 36 minus 21 is 15 equals the distance from G to H. Okay, where do you see this every day? Every day when you're trying to get directions on where you're trying to go and you are using something called GPS, which is the Global Positioning System, the GPS calculates the distance for directions step-by-step step 
do whenever you're asking for directions, does it ever ask you to go negative? A negative distance? Does it say go minus minus three miles? No, it doesn't. So how does a GPS tell you to go in the negative direction? It tells you to turn around or it tells you to make a U-turn. So distance is always positive. So distance will never be negative. That's what the absolute value is. Okay, let's do an example using distance on the coordinate plane. Okay, your apartment is at the origin, which is zero, zero. So the origin is at zero, zero, which is A. Your school is at point S, which is four miles east. So here is north, south, east, and west. So these are standard compass settings. So your school is at four miles east and one mile south. So four miles east and one mile south. Here's my school. So my school is at four negative one. A recycling center is at point R where your class is going on a field trip and it is two miles east and three miles north of your apartment. So two miles east and three miles north of your apartment. Okay, so this is where the recycling center is. So, so recycling is at two, three. So here is at two, three. S is at four, negative one. Okay, calculate exactly and estimate to the nearest tenth the distance between the recycling center and your school. So I want to know what this distance is right here. Okay, so to, oops, to calculate this exactly, I'm going to use the distance formula. So the distance formula says I take x2 minus x1 quantity squared and add that to y2 minus y1 quantity squared. So let's label our points. I'm going to label this one as x1, y1, and this point as x2, y2. And I'm going to substitute in. So my distance is going to be, so x2 is 4 minus x1, 2 quantity squared, plus y2, negative 1 minus, minus y1, y2 minus y1 quantity squared, So I'm going to evaluate my powers. So this is going to be 4 squared. 4 minus 2 is 2 squared plus negative 1 minus 4 is quantity negative 4 squared. So my distance is going to be 2 squared is 4 and negative 4 quantity squared is 16. So my exact answer is the square root of 20. So this is my exact answer and I'm equal to this. When I want to round, 
I use these symbols for rounding. So this is, and I say approximately equal to. So it says round to tenths. So this would be 4.5 units. Okay, let's do last example. Using the distance formula, determine yes or no, whether segment JK and segment LM are congruent. And here are my coordinates. So to find the distance from segment JK, so I'm gonna set up two distance formula problems. So I'm gonna call this one X1, Y1, and X2, Y2. So the distance from J to K, I'm gonna set this up. This is gonna be one minus negative three quantity squared plus one minus four quantity squared. And when I put this in my calculator, I get I'm exactly equal to five. So I'm gonna do the same thing for L to M. So here's X1, Y1, and X2, Y2. So my distance from L to M is gonna be three minus negative one quantity squared plus zero minus negative three squared, and that equals five. And since these two are equal, then I can say, yes, my two segments are congruent. Okay, I'd like to practice some more SAT problems. This would be a calculator problem. So there's non-calculator and calculator parts. So you have a, just under a minute and a half, and this is a basic algebra one type problem from a release test. For what value of N equals the absolute value of N minus one plus one equal to zero? So what we learned is this is always gonna be a positive number here when I have absolute value. So if I add something to one, can I ever be equal to zero? So this is asking, when does y equal zero? And if I substitute in zero here, so zero minus one is negative one, so one plus one is one. If n is one, one minus one is zero. Zero plus one is one. I'm sorry, this is two. This would be two here. y equals two. Zero minus one is negative one. The absolute value of negative one plus one is two. If I substitute in n as one, this would be one minus one is zero plus one, so y is one. And if I substitute in n is two, so two minus one is one plus one, so y equals two. So my answer is no solution. If I wanted to type this in my calculator, I would do this under the math button. Math, that's hard to read. Let's try that again. Math. Then I'm gonna do number 
I'm going to move to the right. And absolute value is number one. And it looks like this, ABS. And you can go look in the table and see it's not there. Okay, end of the lesson.